Welcome to Weekly Digest, where we highlight the work of ministers of government as they push the administration's development agenda. Picking up from where we left off last week, the Ministry of Agriculture signed close to $475 million in contracts to boost the agriculture sector. The contracts were signed on Monday for the provision of a number of key equipment and services to enhance operations and services offered by agencies. Agriculture Minister Zulfikar Mustafa told the contractors that the projects are critical to the government's overall development agenda for the agricultural sector. The minister noted that it is critical to initiate the agro-processing facilities in order to have the farmers on par and be able to contribute to the Caribbean markets. We have recognized the importance of um, building these agro-processing facilities because we want our farmers to go to a different level. And if we have to take in or we have to, um, to, to tap into the markets in the Caribbean because we are driving now the agri-food system, then agro-processing facilities will be very important for us. Minister Mustafa also visited the Dubalay Ranch, which is located approximately 70 miles south of Georgetown, along the Burbies River, to get a first-hand look of the ongoing corn and soybean trial cultivation. During the visit, Minister Mustafa said he was satisfied with the project thus far. He also noted that with access being a critical component to the success of large-scale and commercial production, infrastructural upgrades to the road leading to the Takama Savannah is expected to commence shortly. I'm very optimistic that this pilot project here will bear fruit and we'll have larger projects and, and I'm, I'm very happy to see the way they have started out. Um, from the government perspective, we have, we'll be investing here close to um, $500 million into, in doing the roads. And I hope that not long from now that we can produce our own, the entire, for the entire industry, our proteins uh, for the poultry and other livestock industry. With the aim of supporting entrepreneurs, particularly women, to gain skills and build their businesses, the Ministry of Human Services and Social Security has launched its business incubator and app at the Guyana Women's Leadership Institute, GWLI. At the launching ceremony at the GWLI's office at Coven John East Coast de Marara on Monday, Minister of Human Services and Social Security Dr. Vindia Pasad spoke of the significance of this initiative. It's not only about the training and the women. What next? Do you train people and then you just leave them? Absolutely not. So this morning we will be proudly opening the business incubator dedicated to women where any woman, including those who would have come out of the WIN program, can access help to start a business, to quality control their product and skill. How can they have practical help if it comes to packaging anything? The ministry also launched the WIN application, which advertises women-owned businesses in Guyana. Minister of Amerindian Affairs Pauline Sukai on Tuesday handed over 12 volleyballs, 12 footballs, 6 football nets and 3 volleyball nets for the male and female teams of Bajville, Yawong, Bamboo Creek and Paramakatoy Region 8. The recipients are all thanking the government for the donation. The items are meant to keep sport alive in the villages. The Infectious Diseases Hospital at Linendal will be given support in the form of intensivists who arrived in Guyana as part of the new Cuban Medical Brigade. During Tuesday's COVID-19 update, Minister of Health Dr. Frank Anthony said the certified intensivists who provide special care for critically ill patients in ICUs are among those who were requested to aid in Guyana's fight against COVID-19. composition of the new doctors, we have changed that a little bit because... Um, we try to prioritize where we have the greatest needs right now. And the greatest needs would be in the management of COVID-19 patients. Uh, we need people who can operate our intensive care unit. And as you know, we have expanded that unit to have now about 45 um, beds with ventilators and monitors and so forth. So when you have a patient in the intensive care unit, it's, um, it's a quite an intensive process, um, meaning that the doctor-nurse ratio per patient is almost like a one-on-one -on -one, uh, ratio. So you need a lot of people to be able to monitor these patients. Minister Anthony said the physicians were requested in anticipation of a surge of the Delta variant. 
By the last quarter of 2021, customers connected to the Guyana Power & Lights Demerara Burby's interconnected system will have a more reliable flow of electricity as the five dual fuel generating sets purchased to boost power supply are now being tested for efficiency. That was a cheer for his first effort. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> so PM started the engine as his first strike. So this is the number one engine that's running. In what was termed a soft commissioning, Prime Minister Brigadier retired Mark Phillips on Wednesday toward the 46.5 megawatt dual fuel power plant at the Garden of Eden generating complex and switched on the generating sets. I had the opportunity of starting each of the generator, running it for five minutes and then shutting it down. And I can tell you um, that process went smoothly, so I'm satisfied that all five generators are working and uh, it's just a matter of time before we have the four, four sorry, the four to 6.5 megawatts of additional um, electricity available to the people of Guyana. The Prime Minister said based on his briefings with GPL and contracting company Ward Silla, there are a few more elements of the project that have to be completed. However, this should be done in about a month's time. The Prime Minister said this is only a short-term project and will be followed by a number of investments by the PPPC government to provide affordable, stable and reliable energy to benefit both households and businesses. Close to 150 school children of Chenapau Region 8 have benefited from government's Because We Care cash grant initiative. Minister within the Ministry of Local Government and Regional Development, Anand Prasad, spearheaded the distribution. While speaking with residents, Minister Prasad noted that the initiative exists because the government cares about the people. We care about everyone in this country, regardless of race, political persuasion, religion, class, we will work and we told the people, the electorate, that we will work for every Guyanese. And don't ever, don't ever conceptualize in your mind that Amer Indians will be left out. The minister also urged residents and teachers to take the COVID-19 vaccines so that the country can return to normalcy as soon as possible and children can return to school as everyone plays a role in the development of Guyana. Minister of Health Dr. Frank Anthony is urging essential workers, particularly healthcare professionals, to be vaccinated against COVID-19. Minister Anthony made the call during Thursday's COVID-19 update. Healthcare workers are at greater risk and you would uh, remember that early in the pandemic, healthcare workers were labeled as frontline workers because they were interfacing with persons who were sick with COVID. But on a daily basis, the healthcare workers had to interface with them, which put them at higher risk. And if you're going to be at higher risk, then obviously you should uh, get protection. We want to urge our healthcare workers to make sure that they are protected. Minister Anthony says after the two-week extension period has expired, persons will be required to produce negative PCR tests weekly to enter places of work. Minister of Public Works Bishop Wad Edgel and Minister within Ministry of Local Government and Regional Development Anand Prasad met with residents of Cane Grove Thursday morning. This follows peaceful protests by the residents relating to the Cane Grove Access Road. Minister Edgel explained that the road project was slated to be completed by July month end. However, it was delayed due to inclement weather. This contract was supposed to be completed by July the 12th. It is behind schedule and I should not be making excuses to any contractor who's behind schedule, whether it's rain, whether it's getting access to work on the road because, you know, the farmers are bringing out their crop, he couldn't work, the trucks, but I can't make excuses to that. Even if it means working in the nights, this road now has to be fixed. I need to say this to all Guyanese. The way to get your road fixed is not protesting. The way to get your road fixed is by identifying what needs to be done, work with your local authorities and the regional authorities and central government so that it could be properly programmed and we'll be able to get it done. Minister Prasad shared similar views. As we speak, that project um, continues um, and that also because 
there are three roads, major roads that are being done in internal Cane Grove and heavy duty trucks um, have to use the road on a regular basis. But be that as it may, the road remedial work, like I said, will be done to this main access to Cane Grove Road today. Residents were selected to monitor the remedial works to ensure quality works were executed. Minister Edgell on Friday commissioned three Region 5 roads valued some $31.7 million, while another four thoroughfares worth $172 million were reopened in Region 6. The newly rehabilitated roads in Region 5 include the $10.6 million Health Center Street at Bushlot, Palm Station Street at Blairmont and Bacchus Street, Zergenhoop. The latter two were completed to the tune of $21.1 million. In Region 6, the ribbon was cut for the spanking new $108.1 million road, which serves as the first phase for the construction of the main road from Everton to Mara, East Bank, Burbis. While there, Minister Edgell told residents that his ministry was able to secure more funds to start rehabilitation works at another section of the road. The representations were made to me. We sent in our engineers. And I'm happy to tell you this afternoon, I've been able to mobilize $60 million and within a month, we will start rehabilitation of the road, but we're going to start from the back coming forward. Roads were reopened at Shortman Street and John Lewis Street in Angois Avenue, New Amsterdam, and Post Office Road, Ryman's Irvin, New Amsterdam. These projects cost $63.9 million altogether. Minister of Human Services and Social Security Dr. Vindy Prasad on Friday visited Region 10, specifically the communities of Old England, Kumaka and Three Friends. The Human Services Minister led an outreach in a region where she took her ministry services to the people. She highlighted that the government is committed to ensuring every person across the country has access to services and the outreach is an example of this. I am focused on the human resource sector of this country, of Guyana, which means that every one of you, irrespective of your gender or your age or your background or your level of vulnerability, each one of you is to be supported, to be provided for, and definitely we must commit, and we are committing, and we are delivering to every one of you. Today, the entire team is here through the ministry to ensure that not only do you know of the services that we have to offer through the ministry, but that you are able to access the services right in your community. Minister Prasad also distributed food hampers to elderly persons and persons with special needs. That's it for this edition of Weekly Digest. For these and other government-related information, do log on to our website, dpi.gov.gy, and our social media platforms as well. Goodbye.